I know we're on spring break. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited for today. I'm so excited for our guest. I'm all excited, also excited that I get to t- take a nap today and I get to take a nap every day for the next seven days. <laughs> I know. Well, and I still have to pack because we fly out in the morning. Um, so we'll just meet you. I'll meet your kiddos in the sky, I think. That's so. right. You just texted me. And they said they just had their first. Um, oh, my gosh, my brain. What is the ride um, that's in the dark? Space Mountain. They had their first Space Mountain. They went on Space Mountain. They're like, it was weird. It was dark. I'm not sure where I went, but I was on a ride. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. It is so fun. fun. I'm excited. So Yes. Yes. I'm excited for spring break, though, too. Like, just, just to be on spring break. Um, I've had a little bit of mental fatigue. So today is going to be perfect for that. Um, not to give too much away until the introduction. But I think I need this week just to not think about school things for a little bit, just to give my brain a break. I so. agree. I can't wait to just do a lot of everything that I want to do and not be on a schedule and just chill. Yes. yes. Well, bunnies. I know. And I saw the bunny with the Disney ears. And- Did you? I So, yeah. So for friends who don't know, I'm, I'm doing a hundred day challenge where you take one task and you do it over and over again for a hundred days. And um, this is my third one. I have yet to finish one. Maybe this will be the one. I don't know. Um, I'm giving myself significantly more grace this time than I have in the past, which also is being is very helpful. Um, but I'm drawing bunnies in things. And so the this latest, I don't I'm trying to keep it like 10 days of bunnies and things. It's bunnies and sweaters. And I'm just having a really fun time with that. It was really cute. Yes. It was really, really cute. Well, we also said we're excited about our guest today. So let me introduce our guest. Um, he joins us from California. He serves as education as a high school English teacher. He is also the CEO of the Zen Teacher, the host of the Zen Professional Moment podcast, and he is the author of the books, The Zen Teacher and Sanctuaries. He has a passion for helping people reduce their stress and be in the moment. I'm excited and a little interested to merge the energy of Doodle and Chat, because Carrie and I are some kinds a lot. (laughs) <laughs> with the Zen of Dan Tricarico today as we doodle and chat and learn all about him. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very, very good. I have to say when we were talking off camera with, with Dan, there was a level of just like, you have a wonderful presence. I don't know if anybody's oh. ever shared that with you, Dan. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, as soon as you just started talking to us, I was like, I'm relaxed. I could talk to Dan all day. He makes oh, that's nice. Relaxed. That's a good, that's a good thing to hear. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So we're so excited that you're here with us today. I know we were talking a little bit um, before the show went live, but we'll we'll share with everybody else. We have with us, as always, the bowl that knows, and it has in it questions that have been written very special just for Dan, as well as a few random questions that even Mandy and I don't know what they are. So we're, so we're going to turn our cameras on and pull from the bowl that knows, and we're going to doodle and chat all about you, Dan. Sounds great. Okay. Let's get started. Hopefully I'll have some answers. <laughs> I'm certain that you will. Hey, that looks like somebody I know. <laughs> hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> all right. That's a bad pit, right? If I, it yeah. was. It was. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's very similar likeness, though. So, <laughs> cracking me up already. All right, here we go. I forgot. I need my. I'm back. so nervous. What is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to ask me why the Kardashians are famous, are you? Because I, no, I don't know. No, there's no Kardashian questions. No. no. Oh, okay. oh. That, was, that was the other bowl. That was. Oh, the that was the other bowl. <laughs> the bowl that doesn't know. I think would be. <laughs> I love it. So you have shared our willingness to seek out learning from wherever it hails can enrich many, many lives. Where is learning coming from these days for you? And what is it teaching you? Wow, what a great question. Um, <clears throat> I think I have two answers to that question is, uh, one, um, since starting the Zen Teacher platform and writing the books and everything, I, I kind of switched. I've always been a big reader, but I switched from um, reading fiction to reading self-help, nonfiction, business books, all of this kind of thing. So I am learning so much there. Um, actually, I think I have three answers. The second one is I've, um, 
uh, in the last couple of years taken up photography and I'm learning so much about photography from oh. online and books and um, <clears throat> websites and, you know, just all anywhere I can learn YouTube videos anywhere. But uh, the main one, uh, and it's and it's been the main one for 31 years, is I learn every day from my students. Um, they always, every day, tell me things that I did not know. And um, <clears throat> I don't, I'm sorry, you guys woke me up early. My voice is not to awake You're, yet. It's all good. <clears throat> my students teach me every day. And I mean, uh, I, I think Mandy mentioned... Um, working in technology and any time in my classroom that technology doesn't work, I just say, who knows how this works? And they come up and they help me fix it. So, and, and I think what's interesting about your question, Carrie, is that I have no ego about where learning comes from for me. It's, it's I, I wanna be open to wherever, wisdom can come from anywhere, knowledge can come from anywhere, information can come from anywhere. So it's, you know, I have no ego about that. And you're re reminding me that I'm supposed to be drawing instead of talking or doing both. And hopefully I can multitask like that. So. <laughs> there is a little bit of that in this experience. Yeah. Did yes. I see a crayon in your hand? You did. I brought crayons because I have zero artistic skill. So I bought a bunch of crayons from my classroom. And uh, I'm going to do, and, and I'm really grateful to you because I'm going to do um, an activity that I used to do with my daughters when they were growing up. They're 25 and 22 now. And what we used to do, again, because I just didn't have any kind of uh, artistic skill, is I'll see if I can show you here, uh, is you, you start by taking the black crayon and making a lot of squiggly lines. So it kind of looks like that. Okay. And then you take the other, where's the camera? There you go. You take the other colors um, and you color in the spots. I and love it. it. And, and at the end, it almost looks a little stained glassy and, you know, it's, it looks, it looks nice, but you don't have to have any particular skill. So I thought that's perfect for doodle and chat for me. And it's a, a great memory perfect. from when my kids were young. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That makes me so happy. Yeah. So with me photography, too. are you iPhone photographer, old school? Like, are you with, like with the camera, the separate camera? Where's your, where's your photography journey taking you? Um, well, I thought that you had to have the fancy cameras and I, and I have one of those, but you nailed it because uh, these uh, smartphones are crazy effective. And um, I literally, one of the online courses I took was, you know, um, Instagram ads work y'all because I was just scrolling Instagram and uh, there was this um, ad for an iPhone online course. And I took that and it was so phenomenal that not only did my skills get better, but I bought, they, they have like seven or eight courses and I think I own six of them now. And, nice. um, you know, and it's been fun and the teachers are, are really good in the courses and there's three different teachers in, in this iPhone photography school is what they call it. And I've just gotten better. And I did a fun project at my school where I just started taking artsy pictures around the campus because every campus has neat things to take pictures of. And I thought, I have my phone on me every day and I'm I'm there every day. So why not just be mindful and and kind of take pictures of that? And then I started taking, I wanted people in it. And you know, it's just I knew like because it was my own Instagram and it wasn't school sanctioned, I shouldn't take the students. So I started taking portraits of my staff and they just started turning out really, really well. <clears throat> and so now I have this body of work of portraits of my staff and it's super fun. All taken with my iPhone. It's ridiculous. Kind of crazy. I love that. Yeah, it's so fun. It makes me makes me feel like I am doing some art, which is nice. I love it. And what a great way to connect with people also. I did not expect that, but you were absolutely right. That's exactly what happened. Get to know some teachers that you don't know very well better and uh, get to hang out with the, the ones you do know and, and that are your friends even more. So fun. So fun. I love that idea. <laughs> I love what you guys are drawing. All right. I think we're ready for another question. Yeah. Let's do this. Bring it. I'm ready. I'm on a roll now. You are. <laughs> I was hoping the bull would give us this question, Dan. Here we go. Oh, okay. 
What are the keys to a great bowl of buttered popcorn? Oh, how did you know that uh, about me? Uh, I love popcorn. You popcorn, do? I, I, oh, absolutely. I call popcorn the fourth meal of the day. <laughs> I, I grew up with uh, the family sitting around on the couch watching 70s TV, Starsky and Hutch and Beretta and um, the Carol Burnett show. Just hovered around this big bowl of popcorn. So just amazing personal happy memories about that. And so I have popcorn all the time. And so what what's the best? Um, I'm a classic guy. So I go, you know, um, I, I have this this bowl where you can actually put the kernels in the bowl and put it right in the microwave and it just pops right in the microwave. Nice. And um, oh, it's just amazing. And then I, I just put salt and butter on it. But um, Here's the thing, and, I, and I'm, I'm not I'm not throwing shade on my family, but you know, four kids, a blue collar family, one uh, one income. Um, butter was a luxury. We usually had margarine, and mm. so my my big upgrade is is I always have butter, butter, and uh, and that's that's one of my uh, my extravagances. But I do that. But I I was um, introduced to uh, putting Parmesan cheese on it um, when I was younger, and that's always a good option too. And of course, I mean, I don't, I don't make it myself, but um, uh, I love caramel corn is, is the best. So, but yeah, you're, you're talking my language when you talk about popcorn boy. <laughs> so for children, where do you, where, where are you in the line? Cause I do, I do think I remember you reminiscing that you had to be right on in with that bowl there. Otherwise you were going to miss <laughs> out, right? Oh yes. You had to be fast. You had to be, the, the story I tell is, one of my uh, first uh, serious girlfriends, uh, like we'd go to the movies or something, and she would be like, "Why do you eat popcorn so fast?" And I hadn't, I hadn't noticed, I hadn't thought about it before. And then I, I, I did the, you know, the the therapy work, and I, I went back, and I was, oh, that's why, because you had to get in the bowl, you had to get in the bowl, and and I totally forgot your question. What was the question? There, oh, where are you in the line of siblings? Oh, oh, before, um, right? for better or worse, I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest one. Nice. So, so there are a lot of pictures of me. Um, <laughs> and then. <laughs> I'm the oldest also. So I can. Oh, I, nice. can I am also the oldest. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, we'll, we'll make a club. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. So I also have one of those bowls um, that you just put in the microwave and pop the popcorn. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I absolutely love it. I I have to be careful with popcorn because it doesn't always doesn't always work for me. But I mm -hmm. absolutely love it. And last night, surprisingly, I was just craving some popcorn. And so yeah. now, when my daughter's home, uh, my oldest daughter, when she is home, she fixes popcorn every single day. Oh wow! So, yeah, but she actually puts the butter in that microwave container. Oh. And pops the popcorn with it. I had never done it that way until she just visited recently. And it evenly distributes the butter as the popcorn is popping. And oh. I'll have to try that. See, I, I'm yeah. glad I came here. I got a new idea for popcorn. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to buy one of those bowls. Yeah. So yeah. I, she has one that she got. I, I want to say maybe, maybe like a Tupperware one or something. I oh, got wow. mine from TJ Maxx. Okay. So like mine's just like the Dash brand, you know, the Dash brand that makes a little mini um, waffle maker. Oh, right. oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. mine's just the Dash brand. It works really well. When I say it was like 10 bucks. Can't beat that. No. Mm. And we've used it a lot. It It's well used. Oh, yeah. So is mine. And in the old days, my dad used to, you know, put the kernels in the pan with a little oil and mm -hmm. um and i still do it uh, sometimes like that too but we've gotten used to these conveniences you know and so it's just mm -hmm. easier to pop it in the microwave okay. yes yes what a good question look at that <laughs> i know i love that question can you see mandy's uh, mandy can you see monica's comment because i don't know how to read the one word she spelled because you know Sorry, how bad i am Sorghum. Sorghum. Is that a season? a season? So it's a grain. It's a grain. Oh. Um, my my grandparents actually raised sorghum. Um, and it's similar to molasses. Like you process it and you turn it into a, a thick syrup, but you can also pop it. 
Um, wow. And I actually have tried pop sorghum. Um, it's, in my opinion, just okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like probably because I wasn't good at it because I, I had never popped sorghum before. Yeah. And so I was trying it myself and it's very possible that it was user error. Um, my, well, I'm just being honest. It was very possible user error. But my grandparents grew sorghum. Like they had they had all of it. They had the processing place where they turned it into huh. um, the like molasses type stuff. I make sorghum cookies now because I can, I just buy sorghum now, but they're like molasses cookies. Like something new. Better, so. Mm -hmm. So Monica, is it sweet when you pop it? Like when you make it good? <laughs> is it sweet? We'll see what she says. See what Monica says. All right. I think we have time for, we have <laughs> another question. I would say we have time for a lot more questions. You know, we have a lot, more, a lot more questions. My brain was getting. Well, I'm not going anywhere. No. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm doodling. <laughs> Well, we're just going to talk about food today with you, Dan. Yay. Spicy. That's my Spicy. favorite topic. Next to Zen. <laughs> well, good for the bowl knows. The bowl knows. What? And I guess we're talking in threes today also, um, which is the <laughs> same number of letters that are in Zen, you know? I mean. Yes. And Dan. Like, and Dan, yes. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what are three reasons having breakfast for dinner? is one of your favorite things in the world. Oh my gosh. Um, it's easy. <laughs> That's you know? true. It is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I can, I can fry up a couple eggs pretty easily, uh, make some toast, put on a pot of coffee, um, and, and dinner's ready, right? So that's one reason. Two, it's, it's uh, tasty. It's got a lot of good flavors. Um, I just discovered, uh, I'm, I'm usually a grape jelly guy on toast. But um, I just discovered this really kind of um, uh, extravagant strawberry preserves that's like, Ooh. you know, uh, very expensive, <laughs> but it's, I use it as a treat also, kind of like the butter. Um, and so, uh, so the flavors are good. And then what would be the third reason? Um, I, I just have good feelings about it. I don't know if this is part of what I told you, or, or maybe it'll come up as a question later. But one of my favorite things is just breakfast in a diner. And mm -hmm. so I, I have a ritual. I go pretty much every Sunday morning to a couple different diners. I'm I'm kind of a regular. It's kind of a norm at cheers kind of thing, you know, which is fun. You know, they're, they hey hey, Dan, how are you doing? That kind of thing. Um, so just it just gives me those positive feelings of, of being very welcoming and accepting and, you know, comfortable. So those would those would be the three reasons. But yeah. Breakfast is definitely a good thing. <laughs> it is. Is it always eggs and toast? Or are you are you or do you do you, pay, you mix it up with pancakes or waffles uh, or anything? I, I tend uh, I sometimes I'll make waffles at home, but I tend not to order. Yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much eggs. And if I'm feeling very uh, sort of flush financially, I'll add bacon or um, I, I really <laughs> like corned beef hash. But Lately, the corned beef hash, I mean, you would think it was like diamonds or something with what they're charging for it. Um, so I, you know, usually it's it's eggs, just, you know, two egg breakfast. I'm a basic guy. I love it. But extra, it has to be extra crispy hash browns. Okay. I've started asking because life is too short. You got to ask for what you want. It, you do. Right. Yeah. So I hate to say that I missed the second word. So I know you said easy and comfortable. What was the oh, second one? Um, easy and cut was uh, good flavors. Good tasty. flavors. Yeah. Tasty. Yeah. But yeah, breakfast is the best. It is. And now that we're all on spring break, we have that luxury of, of taking time with it too, which is nice. You don't have to feel rushed and like you have to scarf it down, really. Agreed. And that's a luxury. That is a luxury. Yeah. I think I also spelled tasty wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> I Googled it. I think it's T-A-S-T-Y. <laughs> There's no E. Well, I, 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 I mean, thought the they were just doodling. I didn't know there were rules. 
there, well, there aren't really generally rules. I mostly we're on just spring break. break. We're clocked out. It we don't not have to be the first time we've spelled a word wrong. And that's okay. And that's okay. That's okay. Especially we're not on the me, clock. Especially me, Dan. And I yeah. <laughs> I am blessed with the teaching assistant that I've been working with probably over 10 years. And anytime oh, wow. I write anything on the board, I'm like, Wendy, <laughs> do I spell it right? Because she's just got that speller brain. So yeah. you know. I, I just lean into that part of me. Well, these days you can look anything up. That's for sure. You can. And I do. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's how I roll with everything. <laughs> well, I'm a trivia guy, and I, I thought I was the only one who watched a movie on Netflix with, with a device in my hand, looking up all the actors and actresses and directors and writers. and But apparently a lot of people do it. Me, that's me. That's yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I keep IMDB up. Oh, oh my gosh. That's when I'm watching something so I can see what they've what else they've been in. And yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. I literally, when I was young, I literally had the thought of I wish I could do that. And I yeah. wish I knew their filmography and I wish I could look up this character actor because I was a drama major and an actor in a whole other life and character actors, especially or bit part players, you know, kind of fascinated me because I kind of figured that's how it would go for me, you know, if, if I had any success at all. But then I did that whole teaching thing and realized that was my passion and my calling. So nice. Well, I was going to say the thing about trivia, too. I think that's one of the things. I mean, besides the connection that you can have with other educators, I mm -hmm. miss Twitter for that. I miss oh, yeah. like watching a, a TV show live and chatting it up with completely yes. random people about things on the Internet. I yes. miss that. <laughs> and I will say if you watch um, on Amazon Prime, um, at least mm -hmm. on your computer, if you hover over, Amazon does oh. that through the show. Yeah, I think they call it the X-ray something. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's been very helpful. I like that too. Let me know if I if I get too much into my doodling and, and ignore you guys. <laughs> I don't want to do that. It's all but good. I'm having, it's a good, all good. I'm having a good time here. Fun. I think we're ready for another one. I only have eight colors though, because I think I have multiple of the small boxes. I just, I just love bunch. that you were able to get crayons from your high school class. That's you know that's that's equally fun. Well, I I you know sometimes we do you know poster projects or um, you know one pagers or different things like that, and I always tease them and say nothing says college prep like a big box of crayons. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and they just always stare at me. They're not sure if I'm uh, teasing or not, but I am. <laughs> so the bowl is digging in to the random parts of things that are Dan. Um, oh, okay. So... That's most everything. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most memorable part of your decades long crush on Bernadette Peters? <laughs> I thought you were going to say teaching. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I we 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 scheduled this a long time ago and I just have forgotten that I I just apparently opened up to you. Um okay, I need a drink of coffee here. Hang on. <laughs> and I might need a little water here. I don't know. Um Can, can I have the question again, please? Sure. Uh, what is the most memorable part of your decades-long crush? Mm. On Bernadette Peters. So it started at 13, right? It started at 13. I've had a crush on Bernadette Peters since I was 13. Um, I don't know if I asked you to ask that question, but there's an amazing answer. <laughs> <clears throat> I um, and it's and it's not a I, it's not a short story, so I hope you don't mind. I can't wait. Um, I uh, I always wanted to see her live, see her sing, see her perform, and I just never got to. And when I was living in LA pursuing acting. There was one time when she was, I, I don't know, she's probably at the Pantages or something. And 
uh, I was like, oh, I really want to go. But I had scheduled to come back and see my family. And of course, they're the priority. So I came back and I was like, you know, this was in 1989 or 1980 or 1990, somewhere like that. And I um, and so I missed it, you know, and then came home and, you know, got married and had kids and teaching career and everything like that. And then um, just a couple of years ago, it was a, it was a year ago, August, she was performing at a, um, a venue here in San Diego called the Rady Shell, which is a new venue. It's down on the water by the bay. It's a beautiful facility. And I thought, well, this is it. This is my chance, right? <clears throat> and so I thought, well, I'm going to do this upright. I'm going to make a night of this. So I you know, made uh, reservations at a fancy restaurant and I got a hotel room downtown because it was downtown San Diego. Uh, and I bought the most expensive ticket I could afford that was available. And it, this was just me treating me, you know, I was just treating myself to this, this night out, seeing this person that I've uh, admired, you know, for, for, uh, you know, I posted on Facebook and said a night that was 46 years in the making, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and so I go, and of course the show was just, just, you know, indescribable, just amazing. She's just so incredibly talented. She's a legend, but as a, a former actor and a, and a, I have a journalism background too. One thing I knew is that, uh, you know, if you are patient and you hang out and you wait around, amazing things can happen. And so I, uh, I, I might have done a, a, a little stalking before and kind of circled the venue and kind of checked out where the green room was and that kind of thing. And this was a venue that you could walk all the way around where a normal theater, like there'd be a stage door and it would go back into the, um, I hope there's not a restraining order after this show. I just, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, you know, I was standing back there and there were some other, you know, what, what we call stage door Johnny's back there waiting after. And, you know, um, I could see into the green room because, uh, again, it was a very open uh, venue and you just saw all those red curls, you know, and I saw oh, she's right in there. And I thought, well, this is kind of cool. And then, of course, at some point, they the security people opened up the gates and a big SUV, black SUV comes in like an Escalade or whatever they call those things. And I thought, well, you know, yeah, they're just going to whisk her into the SUV and, you know, and it'd, it'd be just be fun to see that. And then because I, I had nothing to do, I just had to go back to the hotel. So I'm going to hang out. Right. And then um, she walks out with some guy, I don't know, manager, husband, who knows. Um, and uh, and for whatever reason, they walked out of the gate to where we were. And I don't know if they knew the people in front of me or whatever. But uh, they start. She started talking to the people standing right in front of me, and I'm like, "Holy cow, she's right there!" You know. And then when they turned their attention to the man she was with, I just walked around and introduced myself and said hi and said, "We show your movie, The Odyssey, in class, and I'm a teacher, and I just love your work." So I'm gonna have to go with meeting her as the most uh, amazing moment of my crush on Bernadette Peters. It was. A lifetime experience for sure. And thank you for oh, all for listening to that story. What a great story. Yeah. Yeah. And the other part is I, I, you know, it was important. I guess this was a Zen thing or a mindfulness thing. I just thought, you know what? I'm, I just want this to be about two people talking. I didn't ask for a selfie. I didn't ask for a, a, an autograph. So people are gonna have to take my word for it. I don't care if people believe me. I know it happened, but uh, I just thought, let's just make this about two people talking. And then, but, you know, I kind of floated back to the hotel. I will tell you that, you know, so, so that was, that was a fun night. That's awesome. It's also the thing, the other part that's always fun is when you meet someone and they don't disappoint you, you know? Absolutely. And I was, I was worried about that and she was just lovely. And, and I think, um, not, not to be too weird about it, but I have this memory of it at one point she did the thing where like she went, Oh, and she reached out and she touched my arm and I went, Oh, wow. And I think I said it audibly. <laughs> it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know? So, you know, it was, it was a memorable night. It was a, a wonderful night. What a fun story. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I can top that one, but if you have another question, we can, we can try <laughs> Well, the bull is not disappointing today. I can the tell you that. The bull is not the bull disappointing. Is bringing it. it is Popcorn not. and Bernadette Peters. I mean, holy cow. <laughs> if you start talking to me about classic rock, that's the trifecta. 
<laughs> there are no classic rock songs in there because I couldn't, I couldn't nail that part oh. of you. <laughs> I mean, you had a partridge, a partridge family oh. shirt on, but I yeah. wasn't sure if I was ready to lean into that question because if I got that one wrong, it, it could oh. derail things. So I wasn't quite sure about the music. The the thing to keep in mind about the Partridge family and and I think they only precede Bernadette Peters because I think I was eight when I was into them and I thought they were real. I thought at eight years old, I thought that's I want to be them. That's they're the coolest. And of course they're a real band, you know. Oh, the you know. theme song's going and through I still my have head their now. Albums. What, Mandy? The theme song's going through my head now. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's Hello it's World. Best. Oh yeah. yeah. The song that we're singing. <laughs> Come on, get happy. That's right. Come on, get That's happy. Right. <laughs> yep. So see, your life knew way back then, even before you did, Dan, that you were going to be into Zen and people being happy with themselves. You know, it Absolute, started yeah. with the Same. Partridge family. Started with the Partridge family. <laughs> I wanted to be Danny Partridge. That was the key. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I wanted I wanted to meet Danny Partridge. So. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm having so much fun. Good, me too. Um, this is a random question, but mm -hmm. I think it's also very suited for you. What's invisible, but you wish people could see? Love. Oh, yes. I mean, well, that's that's kind of inaccurate because I think you can see love. Mm -hmm. There, you know, you see actions, you see behaviors, you see expressions of love, but I, I guess I would say I wish it was more tangible. Maybe that's the way to look at it. But something that's invisible. And, and again, the other word that comes to mind is kindness. Mm. You know, I wish those things were more tangible. But that's a great question. You're going to make me think of that question after the show, too. And I'm, I'm kind of looking. I finished my picture. I'm, I'll probably start another one, but I'm looking at what you guys are doing, and it's just so cool. I'm so jealous of your skill. It's been a lot of years. Yeah. Happening. That's how I feel about the writing is I've always written and, and just from sheer, you know, Mandy was saying before we started um, uh, recording uh, that something was an illness. And I said, yeah, that's how writing is for me is it's just, it's a compulsion. I get, I get cranky if I don't do it uh, after a few days. And I just, I just can't help but think about the two words that you said too, when it comes to like, um, you know, things that you wish were not visible with love and kindness. And I was just, this makes me reflect on my own children. Cause I have an 18 year old and a 16 year old. And sometimes I wish like that it wasn't that people could see the love and the kindness that is in their life, you know, like really, yeah, yeah. that it was, that it was significantly more visible to them, um, right when it just seems so obvious to some other people, you know, that, that we really could, you know, embrace that as much as. Absolutely. You know, yes. I say that with my students every day is, you know, some of them are down, some of them are struggling, you know, and, and you just want to go, no, you are so loved, you know, there's yeah. so much good, you know, I know you can't see it. I know you're in the middle of a, of a tough battle right now, but there's just so much love. And so I just try to model that, you know, and just, you know, it, it, and it's funny because maybe, maybe they pick up on the, if this makes sense, that maybe they pick up on the invisibility of those vibes that I'm sending out, you know, and mm -hmm. um, hopefully it, it, if it impacts them. Well, you, you know, we impact our students in ways we can't quantify, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's one of the magic things about our profession and that, you know, there, there are students, I'm sure it happens to you as well, who I had decades ago, who say you really made a positive impact on my life. And what's better than that? Yeah. I, I can't think of a better way to have spent the last 32 years. Yeah, agreed. I, I do. I even through the hard parts of being an educator. Yep. You know, um, I really, really still love it very, very much. I think that my biggest as lesson my biggest lesson post pandemic was having to be okay with not always loving it. Cause I had before the pandemic, I had genuinely could say, I always loved my job. I always mm -hmm. loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then post pandemic with just some of the things in education that came to light 
And some of the yeah. things that I started to realize weren't all great about education and how selfless we were, or at least I was, in not a healthy way, right? Mm -hmm. It started to make me a little bit angry, but that didn't mean that I couldn't still love it. And that made that was that was a big step for me. And and that's a wonderful step to get to because it it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, you realize you're gonna make it and that it's not always gonna be perfect and it's not this idealized thing, but that I, I love it and I'm gonna make it through. And, yeah. and that's all I try to help teachers do with the Zen teacher stuff is because because I, I needed it. I was in a I was facing burnout and stress and like how I had 10 years to get to retirement. I'm like, how am I even going to do this? So I started doing these practices. I started writing about, about them and putting them out on Twitter um, and people started responding. And so I, I guess I would say the only thing better than making the impact with my students is making the impact on that higher level with other teachers because then that trickles down to all of their students and the impact is just uncalculable, incalculable. You can't even measure. And and that's been such a gift to me in, in the twilight of my career here is to be able to help teachers take care of themselves so that they are going to make it. Because teachers I, are in my heart. They're my heroes. And I, and I love that so much. And it, you're bringing, you're bringing back um, just, to, I remember listening, I was list, doing all my Dan research and um, <laughs> you did share about the time when you were writing your book and you and Dave Burgess had gone back and forth about the purpose of your book. And I, um, and I really much, I really loved where you landed. And cause I, I really could connect with you when you were, when you were reflecting on the things that are wrong in education and the things we don't have power to change, or at least it feels like it. And I very much often feel like that too. But when you said that instead of fighting the probably not winless battle, right. But instead having teachers take the ownership for themselves and that you were going to be the one um, to help us do that. I, I that really resonated with me. And I thought that that was just, it's just a really um, empowering way to go I don't know what's happening to our drawing, but it, it's just a really empowering way to approach mindfulness instead of we saying, let's be mindful. mindful, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was an epiphany for me, for sure. I, I have a, a sort of an out of body vision of that when I was on the phone with Dave Burgess in my garage. Uh, and I, and I said, you know, cause he had said, you know, you're, you're, and he was just trying to help me. He said, your posts are, you know, getting a little militant, a little strident. Cause I was like, somebody has got to take care of teachers. Somebody has got to take care of them. Cause I thought why, like, who am I, you know, but I, I thought about it and I went back and I said, yeah, instead of yelling about how teachers need to be taken care of, I'm just going to take care of teachers. I'm just going to do it. And, um, that was a, a leap. That was a, um, a crossing of the bridge for me to, to realize that, yeah, well, why not me? You know, I can, share strategies, I can model it, I can do all the things that I do in the classroom about, about teaching, use all those skills I have as a teacher to just help take care of teachers. Because like you're saying, so many things seem out of our control and are out of our, our control in this bureaucracy, in this industry, in this profession of teaching, but we can um, make individual choices that make it sustainable. And that's what I focus on. I love that. <laughs> and it also makes me think even just Mandy, your new role. And I think about the administrators that I've had, the ones that have been good, I, the ones that haven't been good. I think I don't think about them very often, but the ones that have been excellent, I've only really had two of them. And one of them is my current administrator. And that's something that really good administrators do is mm -hmm. they take care of their teachers because that's they know, they know the value of that. Like for the same reason that you want to teach teachers to take care of themselves, I feel like really great administrators do yeah. a really good job of taking care of their yeah. teachers. Yeah, I've heard a variation on that where it said something along the lines of um, good leaders uh, don't tell people what to do. They help people do what they do best. Mm, and, and like that. I, yeah, when I, in, in the, the few leadership positions that I might find myself in, I try to remember that. Because anybody can tell somebody what to do. I, I had like, I wish I had known that more when I was a young parent and applied it to, you know, I, I always say 
that we are going to screw up our kids is a given. It's yes. the degree. <laughs> you yes. know? It's how much. And uh, I wish I had known some things as a young parent, but I, you know, I feel very good about the relationship I have with my girls now, and I couldn't be happier with how they turned out. But gosh, I, I look back, and it's hard not to go look at all the things that could have gone mm -hmm. that you could have done better. You know, I agree. Mandy, does it ever surprise you how much that you have to take care of teachers as an admin that you didn't realize it needed to happen? Um. No, but I think I'm in a unique position where I watched my husband do it for so long. I knew the amount of time that he spent doing that. And I kind of knew, um, I kind of knew going in what that looked like. What I have found is it's not as easy to do as, as you would hope, because your job is also to help take care of kids. And sometimes oh, okay. that's a balancing act between here's what the teacher's wanting and needing, but here's what the student is wanting and needing. And sometimes I was in the classroom for a long time and now I can see the other side of this. Sometimes you can't see from the classroom the needs of that kiddo like an administrator can see the needs of that kiddo. And I think sometimes it feels like you're not being taken care of because you don't see that other side. And yeah. so for me, it's been the balancing act to make sure that my teachers feel cared for and supported and have the tools that they need, but also to take care of those kiddos. So that's interesting. Nice. That's a great perspective. My brain is overflowing <laughs> in all of the best ways. Oh, good. I started a second picture here. So maybe at the <laughs> end we'll, we'll share. I hope so. I want to see. Well, the bull has another question for you, Dan. Okay. You shared a little bit about this already, but let's let's see let's see if you have anything else to add. Mm -hmm. You took what took you? Actually, I'm curious about this. What took mm -hmm. you from studying drama at San Diego State University to 31 years in the classroom at West Hot West Hills High School? Since I live in San Diego, and I and I wanted to be in entertainment in some way, um, I thought, well, I, I, I can't not just go up the street to Los Angeles and give it a shot, right? I, I need to do that for all the people in Kansas and, you know, Ohio who either have to go to New York or LA and, you know, really uproot themselves a lot more than I would have to. And the way some people will um, go backpacking in Europe after they graduate college that's what I did. But instead of two weeks, it was two years. And um, the, the culminating experience of all of that was I had one line on General Hospital, uh, which was super fun uh, in 1989. But then um, what I realized, it was a couple things. One is that the industry is not very nice. Ah. And you, you obviously, you know, based on what we're talking about, you can tell that wasn't going to, you know, reconcile well with me. Um, you need to treat people well. And often they didn't. Um, and it was fun. It was a lark. It was, it was, um, you know, exciting, but it wasn't, um, uh, you know, my calling. And so when I went back into teaching up there, I worked in, you know, I wasn't graceful enough to do the cliche thing of waiting tables. So I, I was a temp. I could type fast. So I answered phones and typed letters and worked for temp agencies and that kind of thing. And then when I went back into subbing up there, um, I subbed in the, the Burbank district and a little bit in the L.A. district. And I said, well, this is what I love doing. Why am I not home in San Diego doing this? And I was back in San Diego within four months of that. And, oh, uh, you know, ca calling mom and dad and saying, you know, if I came back, could I live with you for a while while I get back on my feet down there? And then, then you get back there and, and you know, they're still in the mindset of, OK, our house, our rules. And you're like, <laughs> I've been on my own for two and a half years. And I don't think this is going to fly. And so I was out of there pretty quickly. But um, but yeah, and then I got the job at the school I, I'm at now. And I, I knew my school was the school I wanted to be at. The, the first day I walked on campus, they were still building the school and it just was different. It was a different culture. It was a different feeling. It was a different vibe. I felt at home. I probably, the principal probably thought I was crazy because he was the one who created the school basically and built the school and designed the school. 
And the first day of subbing, I walked into his office and I went, I just want, you to know, uh, this is it. I'm home. And, um, and then they, you know, I took, a, you know, I was single and young and I took all kinds of sub assignments and temp assignments and filled in for a semester and drama and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then finally they hired me um, and I've been there ever since. So I haven't regretted a second of it. What a fun I, story. Here is something I'm super proud of is they were building the school. And when they built the English building, they put me in room E4 and I'm the only teacher who's ever taught in that room. Because a lot of teachers move around, right? And I've never moved. So no other teacher has ever taught in that room. So I said I want a little plaque on the outside of the door when I retire. Danny was here, you know, that kind of thing. Seems reasonable after 30 whatever years, right? Yeah. But yeah, that's that's how I transitioned from going from drama major actor to teacher because you could be, it was an opportunity to be kind to people and to share what you knew. And that was everything to me. So fun. You still have room, Mandy? I do. We got a couple spaces. I think we have time for like one or two more. Let's see what happens. Okay, I have to hurry on my second picture then. <laughs> Because I'm doing my last name, and my last name is Giant. So, well, I'm I'm got to tell you, the bowl just is not failing today, even with <laughs> even with the random questions. Okay. What TV channel doesn't exist, but really should? Well, other than you know the 24-hour All Bernadette Peters channel. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to spin that channel and say, I grew up, you know, you had 13 channels. And then when, when cable came around, which again, in my house, we sometimes had, and sometimes didn't, you had, maybe it went up to, I think it was, I don't know, 20 channels or something. But then in the eighties, when cable exploded and you had 120 channels, that was Nirvana. That was like, are you crazy? I could sit here and serve 24 seven. It'd be, that'd be amazing. But now I am absolutely addicted to scrolling TikTok because TikTok is like 4 billion TV channels where everybody is the star of their own show. And you see <laughs> funny, crazy, silly, weird, dark, wonderful, joyful. You see everything. And it's really, I really, and there's no, the scrolling could go on forever. There's no natural organic pause or so you have to be intentional about i'm going to stop here or you know i'm going to stop at nine o'clock because i got to go to bed or whatever but for somebody who believes in mindfulness and intentionality this has been my um my kryptonite this has been my my challenge because <laughs> it's it's riveting and you can be on photography TikTok, or you can be on recipe TikTok, or you i mean it's like endless TV channels, which which is good, but also horrible if you want to ever get anything else done in your life, you know, so. Isn't that true? Yeah. I like to say it's like Vegas. There's no, there's no, there's no clocks and. Yes. And yes. there's no windows. And that's all, all on purpose. Right. Yeah. They, 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 they have our number. They know what's up. Um, so I work with health coach and one of the questions that she asks me every week is <laughs> what did you do this week to relax? What was your mindful oh. activity? And you are going to laugh, but for me sitting and mindlessly scrolling on TikTok allows my brain to shut down. Cause I think I, I mentioned that. this when we were off camera, huh. my brain goes from the moment I wake up until I get home. And even then sometimes more because I teach a class and uh, other things. And so for me, that is shutting my brain down. Oh, I absolutely see that. Yeah. And so I, I think I do the TikTok same thing is my mindless activity. It is what allows yeah. me yeah. to rest my brain. Yeah. And, and I think one of the, the aspects, uh, in fact, is even a chapter in the Zen teacher book is non-judgment. 
So mm -hmm. my feeling is whatever works, you know, yeah. uh, I'm not going to judge that, you know, that's, that's, everybody knows their own rhythm and what works for them. And you have to honor that. Agreed. All right. I think we have time for, let's do one more. Can, can I share the pictures? Can we do one more question and then oh, we'll yeah, sure. on ours and, and we can see yours too. Yeah, of course. Okay. Awesome. Oh my gosh, the bowl is just has not failed, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Monica says I, I still like don't have TikTok and, and she's probably living a happier life, I think. <laughs> um, because I feel like this is gonna be the best way to round out our conversation with Perfect. you. Perfect. What is it the is. hardest and the easiest thing about being a dad? It's the same thing. The hardest thing and the easiest thing about being a dad is loving your children because, you know, I said they're 25 and 22 and I will never, I mean, I'm sure my, my parents feel the same way. You never stop worrying about them. I'm 60 years old. I'm sure I still get worried about, right? And so it's the best thing, but it's the worst thing or hard. Maybe you said hardest. Yeah. yeah. The hardest thing, the, the other hardest thing is, is, you know, and you guys probably know this is just um, releasing them, you know, uh, yeah. allowing them to be themselves. And uh, I, my oldest daughter just said to me the other day, you know, because um, I, I I taught my younger daughter to drive. My older daughter has a vision impairment and cannot drive. But my younger daughter, I taught to drive. And my oldest daughter said, you know, you still like tell her what to do in the car. And I And I just thought you should know that. And I thought, ooh, that's fair. That's hard to hear, but that's fair. And so I talked to my younger daughter and I said, I'm sorry if I still do that. I'll stop doing that. And she said, yeah, you kind of do that. <laughs> and I thought, I guess I never got out of the teaching mode of here's how you drive. She's been, she's had her license for two years, you know, but I'm so watch out for that turn here. You might want to turn on your signal. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. To As be a dad, fair, you I have a kiddo that is at the beginning of next month, she is going to turn 27 and she still needs that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the other side. Yeah. Now she yeah. doesn't live with me, but like when she got her license, she was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, we took her because she was insistent that she would like, she was ready and we knew she wasn't. And so mm -hmm. we were like, this is going to be a great life lesson. You're going to fail your driver's test. This will be good for her. And my daughter is also incredibly charming. Oh. And convinced the lady to pass her. And the lady actually comes out and says, listen, she's really bad. Please don't let her drive by herself until she practices more. Like, why are you passing her then? Right. Like, we yeah, intended that's... this to be a life lesson. I'm going to tell you it didn't improve. And she's 27. <laughs> it has never gotten better. <laughs> so... <laughs> And, and, and she lives nowhere near San Diego, correct? She lives in Kentucky. So you're fine. Okay. If you're in Kentucky, no, I mean, my apologies. If, if you saw the drivers in San Diego, you would know I'm teasing you because they're crazy. They're absolutely nuts. I, I saw are. a meme the other day. It, the meme said, God moves in mysterious ways, but you don't have to use your turn signal. And I thought, that's it. That's the it. whole thing right there. I love it. Oh my gosh. So much fun. I'm going to zoom in on Mandy's and then mine and then Dan will take a look at yours. I can't nice. wait to see. Well, after looking at these two, I'm not showing mine, but no, I will. But that's, these are awesome. Non-judgment. Those were your words. <laughs> I don't know why my eyes just immediately fell on Bernadette Peters, but. Oh, um, you did the old school heart. I love it. Yes. Yep. I, yeah. So that's fun. wonderful. Got it. I mean, I just, I want these. That's. Well, we will share them out on Twitter and you can, you can grab a picture yeah, of them. We can I, also send, yeah. we could send you digital copies too, if you want. That would be awesome. These are so cool. Look so at this. Fun. Is it, it, that's an old school classroom desk. I love it. And my <laughs> mug is in there. Look at that. It is. I, when you, when you mentioned coffee, I was like, I yeah. can grab a mug. <laughs> I would say I put that in mind too. I don't know. So you, it made it into both. Yes. 
That's awesome. Oh, I see it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Awesome. 90 eggs. Okay, my turn. All right, let's do yours. Okay, yes. remember, I did this when my daughters were very young, and it was super fun. So thank you for allowing me to do it. Oh, my gosh. I love it. So you're going to laugh. I still do that. <gasps> oh, Look at that. Yeah. Double letters. The block letters. Amazing. I, I Thank you. That was my dad taught me how to do that when I was a kid. Um, I saw you both had my name, and so I thought, well, I can do that. I love it. I love it. I still do that doodle where I make the scribbles, um, except now I zentangle inside of those. Oh, wow. But that is how I focus at meetings because I super struggle to focus yeah. at meetings. Yeah. And so I have to constantly be doodling so that my mind isn't wandering. And so that right. is one of the doodles that I do. I'll draw those scribbles and then I'll zentangle inside of them. So that's fantastic. I love it. That's awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Dan, for being here with us today and being a my part pleasure. of this fun adventure. Um, friends, if you were here with us today and you drew along or you're joining us later, please be sure to snap a picture of your doodle and chat, hashtag doodle and chat on your favorite social media platform so that we can share with the world all the fun that we have here every Saturday morning at 9.33ish Central Standard Time. And then Mandy and I will see everybody back here next Saturday. I don't know the date. It's March something. Uh, right. Is it still March then? It is. It is. It's the last, the last Saturday I'm in March. spring break. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Sorry. Um, when we won't be doing a classy, I was, that was in my head because it's still March. So it'll probably be a an Zen OG. Yeah. Or an OG. We do not know yet. Yeah. Um, so we'll see everybody here next Saturday. Um, have a great weekend. That's all. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Thank you. Had a blast.